completely differently, but instead they chose to act the way they did. Like, it's just sort of boiling it down to something that is way more complicated than what is represented in the question. Yeah. Yeah, that's a really, you know, in Julie, Julie's interview, she talked about like forgiveness. If someone apologizes for anything, there's always space and always room for forgiveness. You know, there's always space for discussion, even hard discussions. There's some space for depth of understanding. And even when everything was happening, I only had like empathy and compassion but I also had boundaries and empathy and compassion for myself. You can have empathy and compassion for all sides, but you can also set your own precedence for like what you need for your safety, for your peace and for your love and how you, like how I need to be treated, the respect I need to be had, what I need to be shown. But you know, with that being said, apologies and forgiveness but like there's like I'm just there's nothing like I'm just like I'm in my own lane I've been in my own lane the whole the whole the whole time and I want to stay in like you a beautiful sparkly existed before big brother lane. and you will exist after also, big brother <laughs> exactly exactly yeah but like if so, anyone wants to have like a real open conversation with me I'm the type of person where like my door is just always open. My door is always open. That's how I function. I think that's how we become humans. And, you know, if a situation ever arises, I will use my best judgment if that is the healthiest thing for me. But again, I'm not holding on to, there's nothing that I'm holding on to relying on or waiting on, right? Like I'm healed, I'm healed, I'm full of love. I'm just vibing over over here and like I wish you the, I wish you the best like that's the pretty is, much if it. I was you in that, that situation I don't know if I would have handled it the exact same way that you did I would have been a lot more aggressive and I'm not saying that's like a good thing I'm saying the way you handled it was probably the way you should handle it but it was definitely if I was yeah. in your position I don't think I would have I don't think I could have forgave her so it was just more so like I just wanted to see what you were thinking because I know you are such a forgiving person and so I wanted to see what you were thinking and like see if that was ever thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah I think that's like a great question I think this topic is you know an important one to discuss right because I think we've all had you know all had or will have different situations but I like I just like think of my younger self that was like bullied in high school and in just like different spaces in my life like throughout my life and I just like when I was younger I never had the voice to stand up for myself and I never had the voice to ask someone to stop and um people would just hurt hurt me and pick on me and bully me and I would tell my younger self now, like, I think what I demonstrated on the show and how I handled it was everything that I've like learned and become of like, I was, I, I was, when I was experiencing it, it was very clear that it was like, this is not my energy. Like this is someone else's choices. This is someone else's emotions. This is someone else's actions and reactions. And I can stand strong in like my integrity and what I believe in and who I am and the kind, what, like how I need to be treated in any situation, even a game. And so I think, you know, to be able to have the words and the voice to say, to put a label on something that was happening, but to not engage further with energy that, you know, a, lo a lot of people have been like, hey, I someone would have popped off, someone would have done this, someone would have done that, right? But it's, you know, you sometimes give people more power in what they want, you know, with how they treat you and then they're winning from their actions. 
but like I'm winning because I just I just asked you to stop. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna engage with this. Like this isn't kind. This isn't necessary. This isn't helpful. This isn't love. This like I'm here to play a game. I want to play a game. This isn't like you can play a dirty game, but this isn't game. This is just this is this is bullying for no re for like. Literally no reason. I don't even the worst talk part to was, you. I Leave remember seeing on the Please. feeds that you guys were like, it was week one after she nominated you, but you guys were like in active discussions to like become Alliance members and like work together and stuff. And then it was just really weird because I didn't, I started like, I didn't watch the feeds for a bit during, after week one. And then in week two, all of a sudden mm -hmm. we, she was just bullying you and you know, doing her little walk and stuff and making fun of you in that way. And it was, it was just kind of like right out of left field for me. Cause like last time I had checked y'all were talking about aligning after the nomination. Yeah. It was like, you know, when I set the boundary, it like at that time I was, she thought the whole house was against her and I was like her only hope. You know what I mean? And then me setting a boundary was her not having um, control. So for her to assert control is to try to tear someone else down. And the only way to have control is to try to feel like they have the upper hand by putting someone else down. And so, like, I could see all of that. Like, you know, I love to do my self-work. I love to... I studied sociology. I love to understand people. I love to have these conversations. I love to understand why people are the way they are and you know there must like you, there must be such pain for someone to go through to treat other people in a certain way not just one part like any but and anyone in our lives right it's like i always try to have empathy and kindness and put myself in people's shoes for you know something must be going on with you but like if just because something's going on mm -hmm. internally with you doesn't mean that i need to put myself in a situation to be hurt or subjected to I think was, whatever you're working on, right? I think so, like, I have those like boundaries. Losing a lot of sleep in the house week one and week two because yeah. she seemed very erratic, yeah. very she's like she wasn't mentally there, you know, because Angela she, is very animated. Like, she's animated. So, Just yeah, animated. that's a good word for it. She seemed very, like, mm. happy and, like, fun in like the first episode and like in the first hours and so but then when she wanted to wait she lost sleep became paranoid believed the collective was after her even though they invited her to an alliance which was super stupid and then she blew up on matt who objectively was doing was objectively in a chat and did say some things to her to make her paranoid but flipped her off completely yeah. and she blew up on him in a way that was not right and I honestly think a yeah. lot of Angela's behavior comes from the paranoia of the house because she seemed fine like on the first couple of hours basically then she went into wage then it all went downhill yeah the how like you know some people like a lot of people like you could see just like things that happen like in the house like you your energy shifts a little bit your brain your sleep you're like you're tired you're hungry you're under copious amounts of stress like honestly like i've slept and i ate some food that's familiar to my body and had a good night's sleep and worked out and i feel like a normal human right like sometimes you're you're just like deprived of a lot of stuff you don't get to talk to your family or your friends or you know do the things that you want right like you have to find those doses and those tools of self-care in a place where you're like under an extreme amount of stress so like it is hard for anyone to handle right and so it's just like a diabolical situation and just there's different ways of going about it and i just you know there's 16 16 of us every season over 26 seasons that have to go through this and it's a it's just it's just really difficult and they're you know but my like my like life book is just about like 
loving kindness even in the face of things and you know what you're saying is you might have handled it differently what i hope is like everyone handles things differently when they like you know fight flight like or not right and i just i hope i was i handled it how i honestly you handled it it was just like my response right anyone should handle that situation However, it's very hard because I don't think most people would have handled it the right way. Basically what you did practically is what I'm trying to say here. I watch like many people who are not on Big Brother and if they were in that same position, things could have probably escalated. But you had great. Yeah. Thank you. I, I like that's that's just what came to me. That was just my instinct. That was my response. All I just was just like hey, stop, like identify what's happening to me and just ask for it to stop, stand up for myself. And people in the house weren't, I know like chemo in that moment said something, people weren't standing up for myself. You know, a lot of people were like, I just want to say something. And I was like, you can, can." but no one wanted to say something because they didn't want to be the next person to receive it. They were walking on eggshells people who were scared people are also still playing a game be an upstander don't be a bystander type situation where people just wanted to be bystanders but and not even say anything right and bystand that's why it was like um there were so many things that were wrapped up in my eviction like so many layers to what i experienced and there's so many layers to everyone's eviction right like it is, it is diabolical. I'm just speaking from my my own situation because that's all I know personally, right? And I have compassion to everyone else in the situation for what that eviction means for them. But there were so many layers, and like, I was the only one that fully, fully had my back. That is what you have to do going into Big Brother. That is why I fought for my life to survive in there since I got put on the block to win that power of veto, to play that game with my hardest, with every inch of myself. And, you know, there were so many layers when I got evicted that like, I was the only one that was standing up for myself. Like in that moment, I thought that I, I deeply, deeply believed on so many le- levels that there was someone in the house. Yes, I'm a, a tough competitor and a threat and this and that but there i thought that there was gonna be someone in the house to stand up for me and the only person that did that was kenny and for that i'm very grateful and like again there's nothing there's nothing like i'm holding on to in the house like i want to chat with everyone just about their experience and about everything obviously if i need to like address anything i will and i'll just like chat with them about the game but like that's kind of what i I felt in that moment was like i was the only one that fully had my back in that situation and i made my choices and they made theirs like I don't know. I don't know if this was, I don't think this was shown, but like there was like when I was crying in the corner, having like that panic attack that the world saw kind of thing, like they, I, they didn't show it because I watched that episode actually the other it day. It wasn't My on feeds watched, either. Watched it with moment. me. It was it tough. It wasn't on like live feeds or anything. So, so sh- I was crying in the corner, having like a panic attack and shaking and crying because it was just a lot of enduring it for two weeks. And she just came into the um, storage mm-hmm. room and watched me cry. It was basically yeah. it. it was um it was on the show partially. It had like Mackenzie coming in, T Core was right there. Yeah, but and they, they were all just like, like, um, like Lisa, don't cry. You can't cry. Do not cry. Like everyone's a human. You can't control the emotions. If someone needs to cry cry like crying is not a bad thing everyone does it it was like a depth of a cry like it was i've had a few of those in my life it was like a deep one and it's like crazy in the house it like it happens so like your emotions move in a very different way in the house so like i cried and I, you get it out and then you move on like it's it happens really quickly where like maybe if i'm at home like maybe i'll cry for like a little bit longer but you don't really have you deal with like it's like it all happens so quickly 
So you cry, you're in the corner, you go, you go process it. And then you're just like, you keep moving, right? Like that's literally the house. You just have to keep moving. Um, but like, I hope that Michaela, like I appreciate your question and I appreciate your courage to also like ask me that and ask me difficult questions. Um, I think that I hope in how I chose to handle it, it inspires other people to stand up for themselves in that way and to share their voice, do what they think is right in this situation, but not give more power or ammunition to anyone with more. But again, everyone has to trust themselves to handle it the way they want to. But you know what you were saying, like you handled it the right way. I don't know if I could. Maybe if we're ever in that situation, we remember those moments, right? And for the people that are scared to stand up for themselves, hopefully maybe they can, because I had to learn that, like I'm 33. I've never, like when I was younger, I couldn't do that. So maybe someone when they're younger and someone's doing something mean in school, I know a lot of, I don't know how old you guys are, but I've met a lot of like teenagers in here and like young adults or people in their young 20s and I hope that my story can help one person and two people and make it make a difference in making this world a better place and a kinder place. Oh. Is that it was Austin, literally yeah, an accident, Austin, but Austin, you can take it. I like that way. Austin 06 had like a great that was, comment. Austin 06 great that was a great comment. If you guys didn't see it, Austin 06 said, if it wasn't for the house, I, I personally would have punched Angela. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay, one thing I know about Big Brother, physical violence is never ever tolerated. The only time I've ever seen it was on Big Brother 14 and that guy got with so Willie so. and <laughs> Joe, and it almost happened. So I think punching show, would... so. I don't know about punching, but <laughs> that's crazy. And then um another person said the stress of this the stress of this game is why y'all give so much respect is why I'll give so much respect. Then you have Cedric and Mackenzie playing the game, playing this game at 21 and 22 years old. I can't imagine playing this game at that age. That is true though, because like 21 year olds in the house, they are the youngest of the group inside the house. And well, they also, have- Hannah from 23. I have like a lot to learn about this. Though. Hannah from 23. Hannah from 23 was 21. So like, she- 21 year old. <laughs> Do you, Lisa, do you think? Thanks for listening, guys. That was like a really like nice like thing to share. I haven't really like shared that. Those like pieces, I appreciate like the intimate spaces to have real conversations. The, the worst part about Angela saying. for me as a viewer yeah. is mainly the fact that I don't think she can stick to like a character type. Like I feel like she wants to be the fun loving mom. But then she's also out here being rude to you and being rude to Matt and yelling at people and crying over charcuterie boards. And, you know, it's like, <laughs> like, I just feel Thank like you, she can't decide if she wants to be the Janelle of the season or if she wants to be like the Cheryl Braxton Big Brother 2 of the season. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like she can't decide if she wants to be the mother or if she wants to be the villain and that's my issue with her also is i feel like she can't decide if she wants to be the evil villain of the season or if she wants to be the fun loving person that people go to i don't know if she can like distinguish that because she just goes into these mo i don't know yeah. if she can help it I do people go on because i do because i do have a friend like that they have there are moments where they want to explode and they also apologize for it. like I have that exact same friend there also a Leo, which Angela is. So I can definitely see where Angela's coming from, like her blow ups or everything. Cause the charcuterie board thing I can understand. She couldn't eat anything, but they were eating her stuff. That was the map thing. I have so You're many a thoughts chef. on you know that. About charcuterie? Listen, Lisa, I don't know if you would have done it either. We actually, would you have ate her stuff? Because she was on slop that week and, could, and she couldn't eat none of her HOH food. 
but Brooklyn had to spite her just just to be like, hey, I'm already leaving the house. I might as well just eat all their food before I leave. Wait, was she on H? Was she in HOH? I can't. Uh, no. Just the week time? after. Yeah, this HOH. Week. Yeah. The so. Oh, oh we have no idea. I, was, I have no idea. Angela and some other oh. people. Like, the week that Brooklyn went home, like, ending Thursday's episode, Angela was on Slop. Gotcha. I who actually else have was, no idea. Who else That's was on like it? The <laughs> they do not tell us on the show. They never tell you who's on Slop. They don't, they never they don't show, show it. Because they used to be like, um, like, ha like, have the HOH do it on, like, one of the episodes. They'd be like, I need four people or five people or three people to go on Slop, and then they'll choose boom, boom, and boom. But they don't do it anymore. They like how they, for BB22. I heard like a conspiracy theory. They don't do all of the timed competition players' times. They only do like the three. And that's because they do it because they don't want to make other people look embarrassed of what their time was. That's a huge conspiracy. Just Here's my thing. You want to hear my thoughts on the Go shark ahead, theory? Lisa, because I'm la hot about a charcuterie. And I will put the disclaimer that I don't make personal decisions. This is not a personal decision. This is an objective, factual, objective position, right? Like in the game, I'm not gonna make any emotional. Luke, where'd you go, man? Okay. I'm adding Austin in because I know Austin wants to be here. Um, Austin, I'm yeah. adding you in. Um, so the charcuterie, that clip is hilarious. Honestly, I know that she loves charcuterie. Her first HOH had charcuterie in it. She like loves it. Right. After the HOH though, you know, her first one, she was like, I want everyone to come in here and enjoy my doors always open kind of thing for you kind of stuff. And, um, that's kind of what she did the first HOH kind of thing. Um, and then I obviously wasn't there, but then she was like, everyone take whatever they want. Like my HOH is your, like your space too. My door is open. And then she like brought everything down and she's like contributing everything, um, to the house. I don't, I didn't watch the live feed, so I didn't know how that played out, but she probably did the same thing of like, everyone, I'm bringing this down. Enjoy. I didn't eat it. La la la. But then she got on slop. And again, I didn't watch the feed, but this is just from like the first HOH and her mannerisms from that, um, that she would be like, oh yeah, put it here, enjoy. But then she got on slop, she couldn't eat it. And then she probably wanted to be like, wait, no, give it back kind of thing. So like, that's kind of how I took it. And it was just like, you know, you can't really dictate what people eat in the fridge. And if you're saving it, like, put your name on it with an imaginary marker kind of thing. You can't like share these and take it back just because you can't enjoy it. Like when it was Joe's birthday, um, we were have, have nots. They got, they brought in two cakes for Joe's birthday to bake and they baked them back to back nights. And the girl, the I'm not like too much of a cake person, I say, cause I'm sweet enough already, but you know, sweets aren't like my favorite thing, but like when you're on slop, you literally want to eat anything but slop. Um, but the girls were just like, oh my God, they couldn't have waited a few more days to bake the second cake kind of thing. So it's like, when you're on slop, you get hangry, mm. you want what you can't have. And she just couldn't have it. And, you know, don't share something if you're gonna, you know, if you're gonna offer someone a bite of your burrito, understand that you're not gonna have that bite of a burrito. If you don't want to share your burrito, well, don't offer it in I the first place. Not back the old school Big Brother, where it was they had peanut butter and jelly sandwiches type of slop. It was like food challenges where people like, like competing competitions for food every single week. So that would have been really, really good to watch. Well, even then, people, was... people were still going crazy. Like, I remember a scene from, like, an old school season of Big Brother where they were having the PB&J. And it was, like, a... Like, it was... I think the girls were on PB&J, and they were complaining about how they felt weak. They weren't gaining muscle mass. They were feeling, like, so exhausted every day because they were only eating PB&J. There so, was... I mean, in some ways, I think PB&J was worse than slot because it's not a fulfilling meal and it's only one thing. 
Well, slop, I mean, was multiple things. I mean, they made, like, popsicles and, like, bowls of oatmeal and stuff like that. So, I mean, like, slop was, like, multiple things. But PB&J was just PB&J. We couldn't have uh, cans. Uh, you couldn't have any P products in the house? house? Well, no, you know? they ended they ended the PB&J thing, like, season seven or something, right? So, I basically ate, oh, my mom. Hi, mommy. Um, also, what time is it for everyone right now? Yeah. Like, I, why are you I, away? I, I'm, I'm insomniac. Oh my god, it's 1.45 here. I finished work. I was like, 4.45? 1.45. Luke, what time is it there? Um, oh, okay. Where, whereabouts are you, Luke? I'm in LA. Oh, you're in LA? <laughs> we're, we're in Southern yeah. California. LA? Oh, neighbors, hey! Luck. Oh my god, Austin, cowboy. Oh my god, vaude villain Vince. What I'm, is everyone up to? Like? Go to the the bed. Mm -hmm. um, Might be the big brother Florida. fan. Florida. Where are like, you, Mikey? I'm telling you right now, Luke. Okay, so this is like a couple, like a week ago. I was in Vegas for like the first time ever, like the first time ever we out of the country. I was like, so this is another part of the world I haven't seen. Then I then I realized, wait a minute, California is like right now. So I was like. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh my god, I have no idea, like, how much people are going to be there. But I loved Vegas, so that was, like, a really fun time. But California must be, like, a nice place to live. Like, like I've seen the site online, I've seen everything, and I know it's, like, a really good place to live in. I live Cost of living is a little high, but, yeah. you know, the Big Brother house is here, so... Yeah. Luke, I feel like you would. Did you do any of you guys want to be I on Big Brother? It. Like, would you guys want I to would do it? Chop my own limbs off to be a contestant on Big Brother. That, yeah, that's that's literally one. My, I don't. Hopefully, you don't have to do that. <laughs> I started watching Big Brother, and this is like really, really bad for like because I know that season got like a lot of. Yeah, had a lot. But season 21 was the first one I've watched, and ever since then I got hooked. And I would have nothing more to be a house guest or even a survivor contestant. I have to be like 18 enough to apply on there. 21. 21. They 21. serve all in there, so 21. All right. But I think 18 for survivor, oh, 21 for, for survivor. survivor. In Big Brother, it's 21. What else? Do you want to see me on? Like, what do you guys think? Like, watching me from like a gameplay, what do you think I would like be good at? Like, at? you have to be on the chat because I have to. I am manifesting the challenge so the hard. Challenge. Like, that would be a dream. I'm watching the new you can like contact right regarding um, that. Like, can you like talk to anybody about that? I probably the, can't say, but you? I'm going to be working on it. Like, I, I am very heavily what, like, would probably help whenever that casting application process is happening is honestly, you guys and the fans and my people and my friends that you guys are is, like, keeping the buzz around me going, making sure that, like, it is, like, get this girl on the challenge, the comments, the shares, the likes, the loves, like, this, it ma it matters. It's all a piece of the puzzle. So, like... You guys are pieces of my life, and I appreciate it. Like, thank you for sharing your energy. But, like, the challenge would be because you're in control of your own fate. And, like, those alliances are a little different than the alliances that you have to build in the Big Brother house. So it's, like, I'm very capable of building alliances. And I think when it comes to the challenge, um, when it comes to the challenge, like, people sometimes, Time people a lot of alliances are built off of people that they like and people that they trust and you know not always people that are like lying and manipulating from the get go right it's a different kind of alliance that's being built there that I think the types of alliances that I would want to build and that I tried to build in the Big Brother house didn't work in the Big Brother house and it might work in a different show and I just want to like compete and be in charge of like not necessarily being voted off and fighting for my sp space in that house. Oh my god, I would love that. I would love that. I am going to keep putting it out there. I would like to see you on another season that. of Big Brother. 
I think like a second chance this season is just calling your name if they ever do one. Okay, so here's my question. I've never watched the second chance as Big Brother. I've only watched like the original different seasons kind of thing. So how does it work in terms of like, like if people know you as a contestant or know like your strategy from the old one, like it's not completely a fresh person. Like well, how does it's that all change the game? It's okay. all like yeah. you have to make your alliances on Instagram group chats beforehand and then you go in and that's well, the whole season. It's not like anything like what you played before. It's like, you know who's gonna go in beforehand because you all got the same email. And so really? then you start putting out your feelers and like messaging people like, did you get the same email that I got? It's question mark, do you want to be in an alliance? And then that's what the whole season is. Like Big Brother 22 was all stars. And it was like the whole season was kind of determined by who was in the majority group chat before the season started. So it's like, you have to start networking with alumni now. I'm sure people are already like, messaging people that, on Instagram from this season like that, hey I loved you on this season let's be friends or whatever that, and they're doing that for <laughs> Big Brother 28 or whatever like oh my god yes, are they are. Planning planning already? Like, like, start gardening <laughs> I really guys I really need to practice this like I like my literally yes. permanent face like I, I think I don't really, like, I know when someone is working me, but sometimes I just, like, don't know that someone is planting seeds, which is why I was good on Big Brother, which is why it worked on me, which is why this and that. Like, God, there are, these well, are I, well, I, I won't really say, like, some people are so genuine, they're like, oh, my God, yeah, I loved you on the show, and let's be friends, like, you know, the Big Brother alumni network is something strong so don't think everybody's playing you necessarily yeah. but some people they're looking for their call back they're looking for julie chen to be like come back to the show or whatever oh and then they'll be and then i will be like oh my god it was so nice they messaged me when i came out Here's i want to align with them until they have Luke in their back pocket and he's really the one who's like teaming <laughs> with me and I'm like I'm one step ahead. Like you're my you're my I'll one step that. you're my one step ahead, Luke. Thanks. Good looking out, man. Would you ever go so on like funny. a cooking show? Like a competition cooking show? I would Mass love to go on a cooking show. I've tried to go on cooking shows, it just like hasn't worked. You wanna know? I have some feelings. I have some like, my thing was like trust in the way things unfold, right? Like that was, that was the mantra that was like popped in my, my mind my second week. And things are, thank you, Austin. Hi, Sasha. Um, I think that Things are still unfolding and I'm really excited to see how they play out. And like all of the stories that I've been involved in and that I keep writing when I've taken back like my power in that, I have like a, God, you wanna know what I would love? I feel like a show and I'll put this out there, cast me and cast Tucker as like, the rivals or the competition or like the like people that had the beef and put them on the same team like I have this like feeling that like something like that please let it be I'm sorry yeah. please let it be please let it be Tucker like I'll take Tucker over anyone you know who else <laughs> they would cast like, as a rival. please let it be Tucker oh god oh god we're, we're not going there yet we're not putting that <laughs> no, into no, the no, world no, no, no. Um, <laughs> Um, but you know, whatever happens, happens. Like I, I, I will handle anything that I, comes my way the way I have with everything. And I will do it with grace and my heart on my sleeve and the authentic self. So honestly, uh, that might be like really freaking juicy guys, but like, let's go with Tucker. I think you would um, beat him in a cooking show too. Like I think you're a celebrity chef. He's a, I think it would be a cooking show. And I think it would be a competition show because like I showed I'm a competition beast. He showed he's a competition beast. He got me out. I would. I think if I were still in that house, that 
I would be one of the people that would be able to win one of those HOHs or veto competition and like switch up the game. I know other people have tried up until this point. It hasn't really worked. And I think I could beat Tucker. I will put it here. I think I can beat Tucker. Just because I didn't beat him at that one puzzle yeah. doesn't mean that I can't Honestly, beat Honestly, yes. Like else. you, besides from the, the other females in the house, you are a certified good competitor. And I genuinely thought that you would actually like win more competitions. Like Jen, to just like win like an HOH. To just win like an HOH and be like, I'm going to make a move this week and I'm going to be logical about this. I'm Which of the competitions play. that you didn't play do you think you would have won or like had the best chance at winning? Oh you my god. So? The wall is the best people who are skinny and fit. The And I have this like I just zone out and do it. Like that's just like a piece of me when there's something I have to do. I just zone out and get in there and do it. Sometimes I don't win, but like I have this like hyper focus that I can tap into for certain things and yeah. just like almost everyone was like yeah. almost everyone had fallen pretty early as well. Like no one really made it that far. Even Tucker and Quinn just kept they were shaking pretty much every Tucker was shaking for like, like the last six people to fall and he won. So and like Tucker and I have a very he and Tucker and I have similarities in terms of like our drive and our competitive spirit and we'll do what it takes. Obviously we'll do what it takes in different capacities and how we go about that. But like there's like this like competitor drive that I felt with him whether it was manipulated or not from his side, but like, I have to think that some of that is real. I mean, it's clear with him in the competitions, right? But like, I have that, I have that same, you know, where the he hit that, um, the, the, the veto veto chip kind of thing. That was smart. Like, that was smart. Really, really smart. I would have found a similar, not like the same, cause I wasn't there and I haven't even, I didn't even think of where I would hide something, but like my brain, works like that in like when I was like okay what's the most relatable hiding spot that someone had I was like oh that's relatable about and the way he explained it was really, relatable um I don't know if you can answer this in that competition are they allowed to hide it upstairs because I have not never hide it okay finally that has been said because I'm thinking on every single season like why don't y'all just hide it upstairs and I'm like oh they can't because Okay, thank God someone actually confirmed that. Because there they... could be some type of like finite area. I do believe they're allowed to hide it in the bathroom as well, but obviously they're not allowed I to think, hide it in well, like, no, the diary room. I, I don't re- think the storage I, room either. Yeah. I remember specifically someone was like completely cleaning out the bathroom and during BB20, so I think the bathroom's allowed. Literally, that, that was the talk. Like, everyone was like, um. <laughs> No one was. No messy. one went in the shop. No one was Sorry, messy ahead. this time around. You'd think hide and go Vita would be like, uh, you know, cereal, milk, food all over the place in the kitchen. All you saw was just clothes. The clothes. I mean, the clothes and the beds were flipped. I feel like if Lisa saw that house, she would have been like, "So I'm supposed to be cleaning this up? So I'm cleaning this up? No. I love you. No. <laughs> no. Thank no, you no, for no, knowing no. that I clean." <laughs> That, that was literally seen. what Sam that. did in BB20. She literally had like such a panic attack when she saw the house. They were literally contesting, like, like, like scared of what she was going to do when she saw the house. She was like, "These people are so ungrateful." I don't think she they've was like done the v- the hide and go veto since BB20 though. So I was thinking when they brought it back, there would be some type of rule change. And then when we saw it this year, there was no, like, throwing food around. So I'm like, maybe they changed it to where you can only make a certain amount of mess. Because I feel like that it might have been a liability at some Brett. point for the producers. Like, Brett, when oh, he yeah, that was that probably Brett. because of Brett. Because Brett just, like, completely, like, hacked the competition. I'm thinking like, they did. probably rent the furniture like, in the Big Brother house. So if someone's throwing milk on, like, the couches that you rented, they're like, oh, we can never do hide and go veto again. So then they were probably like, leave the food in the fridge. And the Brad had also had the competition, basically. And- so it's like, there was no point in doing it for another season because Brad had basically cheated the entire competition. So 
Brooklyn, um, I mean, Brooklyn was savage in that competition, and I kind of loved her strategy in that. Like, she was just like, I'm going for it, and I, I was just, like, uh, okay, girl, get oh. it. Um, here, wait, sorry, go ahead. I, I, I love how Tucker was solely convinced that Quinn, like, threw all the clothes, and I'm like, dude, <laughs> it's pretty obvious. And then he goes on stuff, and then he, like, doesn't, like, let anyone, like, he believes it, and then he goes off of that, and then he keeps planting seed. Like, he, he thought the same thing about me and the power up, and I was like, I really don't. And he was like, you do? And I'm like, Here's I the really thing. don't. He always, and he won't, like, he listen. Always, he always will be and, like, oh, I studied human psychology. Like, I can tell when someone's lying to me. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, can you get Still a doing that, right? It's so funny. Like, he says like, the CIA. Where to go? Lisa's baseball on the side was, oh, good for you. Okay. <laughs> Oh. I was just like, <laughs> Are you, like you saw me, oh. I was laughing, and like, now that you like, now that you guys have talked to me out of yeah. the house, you can see that like, my, I, I wear my emotions on my sleeve, I react to things, I make faces, like, I laugh a lot, like, I was just like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, good, good for like, you, like, how about it, if you study there, have fun. I have no body language. You obviously don't like. Can we? Can you get a refund? Can, like, did you maybe? Were you like on your phone for most of that class? Because it seems like you can't do it. So he says he studied with the CIA, but everybody's like he's talking about the Culinary Institute of America. He's not <laughs> talking about the CIA. And I'm like, that's so crazy to say you studied with the CIA and then yeah. not mean the CIA. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here. Here's two places that I would have hid. Wait, the um, what's it called? The the hide and go veto. Low key, no one opened the shower because no one wanted to go in there. That I feel like I would just hide it on, like in plain sight in the shower stall because no one opened it up and no one wants to like get wet and then have like them slipping so they wouldn't go in there to open it really quickly because it was so out in the open and there's nowhere to like hide it so that, that's a hide in plain sight kind of vibe my other thing Tucker's not really the real chef because he didn't even think of hiding it in the kitchen unless he thought that that would be too obvious but like I wouldn't hide it in the kitchen because that would be too obvious kind of thing but like I don't know even know if he, I, I'm like Tucker was that even someone option, or are you once really even had like, hit it in the pillowcase because there was like a pillowcase that kind of like zipped yeah. up and they just like threw it in there and like no one knew. They used it to throw around. I forgot who that was. Maybe it was James, BB-18, but... Brooklyn's hiding spot was so bad. Like, Quinn noticed it immediately. She was like, why are my, why are my clothes all nice and neat in my dirty laundry pile? Who did this? It was, like, really obvious. Loki, she, she flipped my bed on, um, on defense, and I was like... <laughs> Not my unicorn bed, like, even though I haven't slept there. And, um, and you might not I, sleep there. Also, again. I slept in my bed. You might, and you might, you might not sleep there again. What? Yeah. Like, I mean, I, I don't, I like, I, yeah, I not, yeah, that's <laughs> not my bed anymore. I kind of miss it. I slept in my bed. I just got back to like my apartment in LA. I've been away for a little bit um, and sh like just traveling into a few like i went to a friend's wedding in new york and i slept in my bed for was, the first time last was it hard to sleep in the B bb house like was it hard or no i didn't have, well, I have a hard time because i was in, so it. tired that i would just like i would honestly be in my head for five minutes not spiraling but just like going over the day or any residual stuff and then kind of like making a quick game plan for the next day just like a quick like debrief and then rebrief and then like okay and then like i would knock out i was like you're so tired like it's really hard to explain but like you're physically mentally emotionally exhausted thanks seb um and so like i just pass out honestly even on night. the I mean, have not beds i you guys like thrown so many twists you guys just entered the house feeds were like coming on all you guys could ever talk about was Guys, can we please go to sleep now? Like, I've already had so much energy. I, I, like, did this already. I need to, like, go to sleep and get, like, ready for tomorrow like I usually do. Because I know you guys are, like, tired on premiere.
you guys have to like introduce yourselves here like hear the twist like get all your bags in just look just picking out your bedrooms i know you guys are just like i'm so tired i want to go to sleep please i love this game i go to sleep right now <laughs> my body clock like the first week i played so hard because i was first on the block i didn't want to miss anything and then like that's when like the first week for the first half and i should have like i kind of knew but then like i didn't want to fully believe it and i was still assessing it out but like Lee and I would have like late night daily downloads and we would be the last ones awake and like brief each other and like figure things out and download on the game. And then like that started slowing down and I'm like, hey, we need to talk. Hey, we need to talk. And she's like, I'm like taking a day. I don't want to talk about game today or tomorrow kind of thing. And like, I would respect that. But like looking back hindsight, like she was distancing herself from me in the game, but like use, using reassurance to like, try to be like oh no we're good and because we didn't we agreed not to spend too much time together so it, no one would suspect it i was like oh she's just doing a real he, she's doing her job i'm doing my job and we'll reconnect but there was like one day where like she um i was like hey i know we haven't talked in a while but like we need to daily download she's like okay i'll find you today it was the same day that tucker was talking to me i was supposed to talk game with tucker and supposed to talk game yeah. with um uh leah thank you and leah never talked to me and that was the first day where i was just like oh she, she might like she might have some other she's actually done that a few times she's been like, like i'll get you later today and then she's never gone back to that person i think she did it to t core and t core was like why did she never come back today sure maybe that's just her strategy is she is she yeah, working is, with them is, kind of like, thing T4, like well sort of kind of like who knows with leah at this point she's kind of just floating but like one thing about leah she'll say i'll come back to you and then not come back to you okay so that's the just kind of like yeah is like the only first sign i oh, saw she... her like in an alliance was with her mackenzie and matt then when matt left i thought her and mackenzie were going to be like like a gal pal duo which i was really hoping for but then after that i just saw her like distancing herself from mackenzie and i was like leah doesn't really fall anywhere into the house doesn't yeah but she, she hasn't come out of anyone's mouth like she's really not been in the mix her. which is also, also like chelsea really does not like her though chelsea doesn't like her there are a few people who have been like leah gives me weird vibes she hasn't ended up on the block, but it's like a few people would probably put her on the block if they were to win. They just haven't won yet. There's yeah. just like bigger targets, I feel like. I feel like Joe. They're saving. It's so interesting. They're saving the easier targets for later. Do. He wants to get out and big like, competitors if he wins. Here's the thing. Tucker always yeah, talks about I mean, when like, he gets out, like, oh, did, there's but... bigger fish to fry than him, but, like, you keep, is there? You keep doing that. You're gonna is there? Next. Like, Tucker, I'm telling you, if Angela leaves, and if all these targets leave, guess who's next on the hit list? Ooh. But here's also the thing. If, if you keep saving someone till later... At some point, there's not always going to be a later, and then there, you're stuck with people that you might not want to be in there with you. And I think that's like, I don't know if people are realizing it because like every week is changing so quickly. Kind of, I mean, I mean that's Big Brother. Expect the unexpected, but like, I think people are like, we'll get Angela out another week, or we'll get this person out another week, but it's not happening because like a new drama or a new, new tea or a new something arises and then people are going to be stuck with people that they actually don't want in the game that they don't necessarily trust that like they made their own bed of those are the same people that are in the game because this season they're playing a game of getting the strong players out kind of going with whatever happens that week and i feel like it's going to affect like a long-term game plan it seems like People don't really have this, like, clear vision of what's happening. And, like, I felt like at some point when I was in there, I was like, I see everything playing out this way kind of thing. I mean, maybe I was, like, tooting my own horn a little bit. But, like, I kind of, like, saw a, like, I 
kind of saw the like blueprint of how things could go if people made similar or the same choices kind of thing. Um, Michaela, did you need to mean, mean to leave or do you want me to add you back in? I no. you. Uh, um, so like, I just, I feel like people just like, I don't know if they're going to be able to get out the people that they actually want. I feel like now. people don't think about like, oh, who no. do you want to live with for 90 days as much as they should? Because it's like, Alisa versus Angela vote. It's like, you kept Angela in because she's not a threat. But like, now you have to live with her for the rest of because nobody's going to waste and waste an HOH getting her out. And it's like, if you kept Lisa, you would have had cooking, you would have had people to eat with. Like, I just don't understand the perspective of like, well, she's All too big. of a threat it's like like well she's All too big time. of a threat it's like 